Home care is a good PPE, IS1 and companies combined question, fully integrated and is excellent exercise for um, what is going to come. Home care is a manufacturer and a distributor of homeopathic remedies. Home care prides itself in the fact that their products are 100% natural and organic. Home care is registered bad vendor and only trade with other registered bad vendors. Home care has a 30 June year end. Home care's first priority is to provide cures to people in need and as a result they neglected the accounting records. In order to adhere to the requirements of the South African Companies Act and the International Financial Reporting Standards, Home Care made the decision to outsource the preparation of the annual financial statements for the year ended 30 June 2016. Mr. Guru, the Financial Director of Home Care, contacted you in order to assist with the preparation of the annual financial statements and provided you with the following information. Now, before we're going into the detail, let's just see what this question requires from us. Number one, prepare the profit before tax note as it relates to property, plant and equipment and inventory in the financial statements of home care for the year ended 30 June 2016. What do we have to prepare? The PPE note? No. The inventory note? No. The profit before tax note. Prepare the profit before tax note as it relates to property, plant and equipment and inventory in the financial statements as of 30 June 2016. It's important that you establish exactly what is required from you. And then in the second part, prepare the statement of changes in equity of home care for the year in the 30 June 2016 as it relates to the uh, given information. Good, the title column is not required. So let's go back and let's see what kind of information do we have. We have comparative figures. The year in the 2016 rand and the year in the 2015 rand. Land and buildings, equipment, accumulated depreciation, delivery vehicles, accumulated depreciation, furniture, accumulated depreciation, investment in listed entity, Hmm. Raw materials, working process, finished goods, trade receivables, allowance for credit losses. Hmm. Bank, ordinary share capital, 5% non-cumulative pref share capital, 6% convertible pref share capital. Share premium, retained earnings as at 30 June 2015. Sales, cost of sales, dividends received, distribution expenses, administration expenses, other operating expenses. Then they give us the authorized share capital of our mucure was as follows. 2 million ordinary par value shares of 2 rand each. Important information. 1 million 5% non-cumulative preference par value shares of 2 rand each and 500,000 6% convertible non-cumulative par value shares of 1 rand 50 each. All three of these classes of shares is represented by equity capital. On 1 July 2015, the beginning of the current financial year, the following shares were in issue. Now, the B part of the question wants you to do a statement of changes in equity. So, you might as well write down the, the, uh, the skillet and, uh, and let's start completing that as we go along. So, opening balance, 800,000 ordinary shares of 2 rand 50 each. Now, immediately I have to go back to this note. There, it was um, authorized to be issued at a par value of 2 rand. So what would have been gone to our share capital account? 800,000 times 2. And the 50 cents, that excess issue price of 50 cents, 800,000 times 50 cents would have gone to the share premium account. So let's start here. Statement of changes in equity of home care. Now here's a mistake. Home care should have been there on, as a separate line item. Oh, goodness gracious. 
صحيح يا يشرف عتام يا كياب أم لمتت statement of changes in equity for the year ended 3 June 2016 rent 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 right through its merchants of good opening balance in our order share capital account, 800,000 times 2, the issue price. In our share premium account, 800,000 times 50 cents, the excess amount. Now, because it's all poor value shares initially, we are going to complete our opening balance first to see whether there isn't another class of share, which there's also a share premium for, because in our statement of changes in equity, there is only one share premium account. Great. In our following class of shares, we have issued 500,000 5% non-cumulative preference shares at 3 rand each. What was the nominal value of the par value? Par value was 2 rand each. So 500,000 times 2 rand would have gone to the non-cumulative preference share capital account. And 500,000 times 1 rand, the surplus amount, 3 rand less 2 rand, would have gone to the share premium account. So here 500,000 times 2 rand would have gone to the capital account, that gives us a million rand. And then the excess, 500,000 times 1 rand, that would have gone to the share premium account. The last class of shares that we, that we issued was our 6% convertible non-cumulative shares. So then we've issued 300,000 of those shares. They had a par value of 1 rand 50, and we have issued it at 1 rand 50. So we've issued it at par value. There was no share premium associated with this one. So 300,000 times 1 rand 50 would have given us an opening balance of 450,000. Now we can uh, calculate what our share premium balance is, it's 800,000 times 50 cents, 400,000 plus 500,000 rand equals then a total of 900,000 rand. The land and buildings were revalued for the first time. It is important to see whether it's the first time, because if it isn't the first time, then it will only be the movement um, in the previous year's revaluation amount and this year's revaluation reserve that will go to my total comprehensive income for the year um, so if it was for the first time I will not have any opening balance in my revaluation reserve and the full movement i.e. the difference between the cost price of land and buildings and the revalued amount of land and buildings that would have gone through my income statement my statement of other comprehensive income to the statement of changes in equity now, they tell us that the value of land in buildings were 2.3 million rand. If we go here to the income state, oh, to the, uh, the, the trial balance, we see that land in buildings there equals 2 million rand. So clearly, the difference of 300,000 will represent our other comprehensive income for the year, i.e. our revaluation surplus. So revaluations, in our revaluation surplus, no opening balance, 300,000, which is the 2.4 million, uh, 2.3 million less the 2 million, and that will give us then a closing balance of 300,000 as well. Now, equipment consists of a machine that is used to sort the products for distribution. This machine was purchased on 1 July 2013. During the current year under review, the equipment caused some problems when certain products were incorrectly dispatched. As a result, the management decided that the equipment will only be used for 50% of its original estimated lifetime. The accountant correctly calculated, important words, the depreciation charge, including the change in estimate according to the cumulative catch-up method to be 200,000 Rand. And the depreciation, also important words, was correctly included in distribution costs. So it's already there. We don't have to redo 
um, or have to adjust our profit figure or our distribution cost figure or any other expense figure with a distribution for the depreciation that has not been passed. So this distribution is already, or this depreciation is already in the books and it's included into distribution costs. Now equipment is depreciated on the straight line method over the useful life of the asset to a zero residual value. Now what is important is number one that you've identified there was a change in estimate. Number two, we've already established that our total depreciation charge for the year, which has already been posted, was correctly calculated as 200,000, and that was based on the cumulative catch-up method. The third thing that you should realize is if we have used the cumulative catch-up method to do this change in estimate, this depreciation charge of 200,000 rand consists out of two elements. The one element will be equal to the catch-up. The other element will be our actual depreciation charge for the year. We have to do our profit before tax note. So in our profit before tax note, we have to um, reveal or disclose to the reader of the financial statement what the depre total depreciation on equipment was for the year, which we know now is 200,000, and we have to break it down into original estimate and change in estimate. Now, let's have a look what they give us for equipment in this little trial balance. For equipment, they tell us that the cost price of the equipment was 500,000 Rand. We do not know what the accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year was. Therefore, we do not know what the carry value of the asset at the beginning of the year was. But we know what the cost price and the accumulated depreciation at the end of the year is. This is as at 30 June 2016. So therefore, at the end of the year, we had accumulated depreciation on that equipment of 300,000. How much depreciation did we pass this year? We passed 200,000 Rand depreciation this year. So therefore, they tell us that there was no equipment um, which was... And management side equipment will only be used, the count and tone, blah, 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 blah. It's equipment and straight line basis. So if we look at the, at the, at the cost figure, at the cost of equipment, 500,000, 500,000. I think it's safe to assume that we haven't purchased or disposed of any equipment in the current financial year. So therefore, if that figure is 300,000 at the end of the year, and we've passed 200,000 rand worth of depreciation in the current year, what was our accumulated depreciation as at the end of last year? It must have been 300,000 less 200,000, which equals 100,000 rand. So we've written off 100,000 rand up to the beginning of the current financial year, which was 30 June 2015. When did we purchase this equipment? We purchased this equipment on 1 July 2013. So therefore, from 1 July 2013 to effectively 1 July 2015, how many years has gone past? Two years. Exactly two years. We are using the straight line method with no estimated residual value. So that means if it is two exact years, 12 months, 12 months, in total 100,000 rand, how much depreciation did we pass per annum? 50,000. So if we're going to go back to this calculation, we will say, well, okay, our original cost price was 500,000. At the beginning of the year, we had 100,000 accumulated depreciation. So the carry value of the asset at the beginning of the year was 400,000. Exactly two years has gone past in order to derive at 100,000 Rand. It's straight line, so it means I'm writing off exactly the same amount each and every year. Therefore, I must have written off 50,000 in 2014 
and 50,000 in 2015. So if I did continue with this old method, I would have written off 50,000 in this year as well. Now the question tells me that I have decided that equipment will only be used for 50% of the original lifetime. What was the original lifetime? Well, if that was 500,000 grand cost price and we write off 50,000 per year, what was the lifetime of the asset? 500,000 divided by 50,000 equals 10 years. Now they say we're going to use it up in 50% of the original lifetime. So now, what is 50%? We're going to use it up in five years. So 500,000 divided by five years then give us depreciation of 100,000 rand per annum. So how much should our accumulated depreciation have been at the beginning of the year if we have applied this new estimate retrospectively? We would have had then 100,000 rand for two years, which equals 200,000 rand. And for the current year, 100,000 rand. So what is our catch-up? Our catch-up would be 200,000 less 100,000, which equals 100,000, plus our current year's 100,000. And what does that give us? The 200,000, which was actually passed for depreciation in the current financial year. So we have to do our profit before tax note. So if we go to our profit before tax note, so I'm here limited. Notes to the financial statements for the year in the 30 June 2016, 2016 Rand, profit before tax. That one again on a separate line item. Going to keep that there. And now this thing is going to go out of sync, so I'm just going to tell you it should have been on a separate line item, otherwise I have to move lines. Okay. Included. In profit before tax were the following items and here you know that you have to make a distinction between income items and expense items. Remember they don't want everything disclosed under this note. I'm going to refer you back to the required part again. Prepare the profit before tax note as it relates to property, plant and equipment and inventory. Only everything that relates to those items that needs to be shown in the note. Depreciation. Depreciation on equipment, original estimate and change in estimate. What was our original estimate? That was 50,000 per annum. So our original estimate, 50,000 per annum. How much was our total depreciation charge on equipment? 200,000. So what is the impact of the change in estimate on the current year's profits? A negative impact of 150,000 rand. Great. The next thing that they're talking about is on 1 October 2015, a delivery vehicle with an original cost price of 250,000 rand and accumulated depreciation of 100,000 rand as at 1 July. So the carry value of this delivery vehicle at the beginning of the current financial year was 150,000. We have used this asset from 1 July to 1 October. So 1.7 to 1.10 gives us a three month period. And then we have sold it to one of the employees. The accountant was unsure how the transaction should be treated and only debited bank and credited the delivery vehicles at cost account with the amount received. Vehicles are depreciated on the straight line basis over the estimated lifetime of five years. No other additions or disposals of vehicles took place during the current financial year. So if we're going to look at delivery vehicles at cost, that one there and that one there, no disposals, no acquisitions. And although we said that, there was a change of 150,000 rand credit to the delivery vehicles at cost. So what happened when they sold these vehicles? You debited bank with 150,000, 
and she credited delivery vehicles at cost with 150,000 rand. So that was the proceeds on the sale of the vehicle. No, the financial manager correctly calculated the de total depreciation charge on vehicles for the year as 202,500. They give it to me. However, this amount has not yet been recorded. Oh, that is such important words. Depreciation was correctly provided for and included in the trial balance for all other assets of property, plant and equipment. Good, now going to our profit before tax note, we know that our depreciation on vehicles was 202,500. Why then give me this long spiel here about the sale of a vehicle? Because I also have to disclose the profit or the loss on the disposal of assets. So I have the cost price, I have the carrying value at the beginning of the year. On this specific vehicle, I have to work out my total depreciation up to the date of sale. I have the proceeds now, which was 150000 So therefore, we can work out what was the profit or loss on the sale of the vehicle. So 250000 cost price. 100,000 accumulated depreciation asset 1 July, depreciation until the date of sale, 250,000 divided by 5, multiplied by the 3 months that we've used it, 12,500, carrying value of the asset at the date of sale, 137,500, the amount received was 150,000, therefore we made a profit on the sale of the asset of 12,500. So in my profit before tax, tax note under income, profit on the sale of vehicles, 12,500. Depreciation was correctly provided for and included in the trial balance for all other classes of property, plant and equipment. Again, important that you note that. If I go back to my trial balance, I still have another class of uh, PPE and that is furniture. He says everything, no difference between cost price. So I can safely assume that no furniture was purchased or sold during the current financial year. And clearly if I look at my accumulated depreciation, it increased from 150,000 to 200,000 rand. So clearly we've written off depreciation on that furniture for the year of 50,000 rand. So again in my profit before tax note, Depreciation on furniture of 50,000 Rand. Nice question. Great. Number eight. The gross profit percentage is 30% on all products sold. So 30% on sales. Included in cost of sales is an amount that relates to a write down of inventory to its net realizable value. That was done during the year as a result of a decrease in demand of some products when a competitor launched a newly similar product. You can assume that the amount of the adjustment was correctly calculated and included in the trial balance. Gross profit percentage on sales, 30%. We have our sales figure. Our sales figure for the year equals 10 million rand. So what is 10 million rand? times 30 percent. Or alternatively cost of sales. What is cost of sales? Cost of sales equals 10 million rand times 70 percent. What is our actual cost of sales? Our actual cost of sales 7.5 million rand. So what is the additional there? 500,000. What is my accounting entry? I debit NRV adjustment account, which is then being closed off against cost of sales. So I, in effect, debit cost of sales. And I create inventory with the NRV adjustment. So what was our NRV adjustment? Our NRV adjustment was 500,000 rand. 
What do they want from us? They want our PPE, our, our profit before tax note for all transactions that relate to PPE and inventory. So a net realizable write-down, value write-down, and now value adjustment, whatever you want to call it, 500,000 rand. And then we're done with the required part on profit before tax. The tax expense for the year was correctly calculated as 77,500, taking into account all the um, information above. So everything has already been taken into account. It has already been correctly calculated. So please, in heaven, in heaven sake, do not try to recalculate the tax. I give it to you. You can just use it. Now they tell us the following transactions still need to be accounted for in the accounting records of home care for the year ended 30 June 2016. It's not there. It's not in the trial balance. So we have to still do it. On 1 July 2015, right at the beginning of the current financial year, home care decided to convert its ordinary shares into no par value shares on a one-to-one -one basis. So... If we look here at our ordinary share capital, we had 800,000 shares initially issued at 2 rand 50 per share. So what are we going to do? We're going to transfer the capital amount, 1.6 million, to a stated or declared ordinary share capital account. So either the one or the other, a declared ordinary, uh, ordinary share capital account or a stated ordinary share capital account. And we have to transfer those shareholders portion of the share premium, i.e. that 50 cents, which they have invested initially into the company, to the share, uh, to the declared capital account as well. So 800,000 times 50 cents gives us 400,000. So 400,000 plus 1.6 million gives us that 2 million rand, which was transferred to the stated or declared capital or the capital account. How many shares was it? It was 800,000 shares at the original issue price of 2 rand 50 per share. Right. Then on 31 December 2015, Home Care bought back. What does that mean? It means that they have repaid the shareholders for those shares that they held. They bought back 300,000 5% non cumulative preference shares at 3 rand 20 per share in cash. Now let's just check at what price was these shares originally issued. 5% cumulative shares was issued at 3 rand per share. How did we account for that? What was the par value? It's par value shares. It was 2 rand a share, which was in the capital account and one rand a share, which was in the share premium account, and it was 500,000 shares in total. So what are we going to do? We're going to buy back 300,000 of those shares initially issued at three rand a share, but we're going to give the shareholders a sweetener. We're going to give them three rand 20 per share. Guys, what can I take out of the capital account? only the amount that is lying there and what is lying there 300,000 times 2 rand what is lying in the share premium account 300,000 shares at 1 rand and then the 20 cents that we're going to finance out of retained earnings so we're going to take out the 300 shares that we bought back at 2 rand a share out of the capital account which gives us 600,000 we're going to take their portion of the share premium account out, and that was 300,000 shares at 1 rand each, and that gives us 300,000 rand. And then 300,000 shares at 20 cents each, that 20 cents is going to come out of retained earnings, 60,000 rand. So what is our accounting entry if I've asked you journal entries? I would have debited 5% non cumulative brief share capital account 600,000. I would have debited share premium account 300,000. I would have debited retained earnings 60,000. And I would have credited bank with the amount I'm going to repay them 960,000 Rand. 
It's important that you understand this journal entries because right here after we're going to do cash flow statements. And then I'm interested in the bank figure, not in the statement of changes in equity figure, in the bank figure. And you should know then that the total amount that we've repaid was then 960000 on 30 April 2016, Home Care converted 100,006% convertible com cumulative shares into ordinary no par value shares at a conversion price of 2 Rand per share. Well, 100,000 shares, how many were issued initially? They were initially issued 300,000 shares. It was issued at 150, which was equal to the par value of the shares of 150. So what are we going to do now? We're going to convert that into ordinary shares. And the value of the ordinary shares is going to be 2 Rand per share. So here we're going to 100 divided by 300, multiplied by 450,000. Or you could have said 100,000 shares multiplied by 150 a share, which gives us 150,000. When I convert one class of share into another class of share, I just move equity between those classes of shares. So whatever I'm going to take out here, i.e. 150,000, I'm going to add in my stated or declared open share capital account 150,000. Now, I've issued to those shareholders shares of ordinary shares of 2 Rand each. So, how many ordinary shares have I issued? I've issued then 75,000 ordinary shares in order to make good for the 150,000 share capital, which I uh, have converted. Then on 30 June 2016, that is now at year end, Hyrule declared a final ordinary dividend of 10 cents per share. The dividend is payable on 1 August. Now, when do we have to provide for the dividends? A dividend declaration date. So, final ordinary dividend. Now, if we have written everything down, it's very nice. We had 800,000 shares initially. We've issued another 75,000. So, we have in total 875,000 ordinary shares. 875,000 ordinary shares at 10 cents a share gives us then 87,500. Now, we know that if we have um, declared an ordinary dividend, it means that by implication, the preference dividends have been declared as well. So if we go to our 5% cumulative shares, outstanding, remember always only on par value, on the nominal value of the shares, 1 million rand multiplied by 5% as from the beginning of the year, 1 July 2015, up to the date of conversion, which was 31 December 2015, which gives us exactly, oops, six, six months. So if we go back to this one, where the dividends are, a million rand times 5% times six months gives us a total of 25,000 rand. What is then our outstanding capital amount? For the rest of the year, our outstanding capital amount was 400,000 times 5% for the remainder of six months for the year. 400,000 times 5 for six months, 10,000. Total brief dividend on the non 5 percent non cumulative shares, 35,000. On the convertible shares, now remember only on the par value, 450,000 was the outstanding capital amount up to 30 April, so for a period then of 10 months, 450,000 times 6% times 10 months, gives us 22,500, the remaining amount there on that um, account, 300,000 times 6% for the remainder of the year of 2 months, that gives us 3,000. So if I add all these ones together, I get total dividends of 148,000. So my statement of changes in equity, dividends, 148,000 grand. Now the only other thing that we haven't um, 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 calculated as yet is our profit after tax. So let's have a look at our profit after tax. 
They don't give it to us. So give us the opening balance of our retained earnings, which was 600000 And then we have to go and determine our profit before or after tax. That would be our sales, less cost of sales, plus dividends received, less distribution expenses, less admin expenses, less other operating expenses, less our this amount has not yet been recorded, the 202500, so less the 202500 rand, and that should give us then our profit before tax. Sales, cost of sales, dividends, distribution expenses, administration expenses, other oh, the profit on the sale of the vehicle, that is not included either, so we have to include that profit on the sale of the vehicle that we've worked out. It was as well as the 202500. That gives us then profit before tax of 360,000. And then they tell us that the actual tax for the year that you can use, which is correct, is 77,500. Remember that one? The tax expense for the year was correctly calculated as 77,500. So we're going to subtract that to give us our profit for the year of 282,500. We're going to put it in there and then we are done with the question.